Deuteronomy chapter 5. And Moses called all Israel and said unto them, Hear, O Israel, the statutes, judgments which I speak in your ears this day, that you may learn them and keep and do them. Remember, this is a new generation. The old generation has died out. Preparing them for the land. He's setting a foundation now of the laws by God. The rules. It's repeated from Leviticus. It's re repeated from Exodus and Numbers. To remind them. The Lord our God made a covenant with us in Horeb. at Sinai. The Lord made not this covenant with our fathers. Oh. Father Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. But with us, even us, who are all of us here alive this day. They were there. They were there. We're going to see in Exodus 20. And the Lord talked with you face to face in the mount out of the midst of the fire. Exodus 20. We're going to go back there. One specific point. But right now, this is Exodus 20. This is a repeat of the Ten Commandments. They were young. It's been 40 years. The oldest one in the group that's going in the land would be about 59. Those that were 20 and older died. 40 years in the wilderness. I stood between the Lord and you at that time. Let's go to 1 Timothy 2.5. Moses, a type of Jesus Christ. 1 Timothy 2.5. And we see Paul writing Timothy, for there is one God, that's what they believe, one God, and one mediator between God and men, the man Christ Jesus. Moses stepped in between God and the people. There was no Jesus Christ yet. He had not been born. And when the, when they say, Jesus turns to his disciples and say, well, who say, they, who say that I am? And one of the answers is, the prophet like unto Moses. Here he is. No one's been a mediator between man and God except for Jesus. And we see Moses stepping in. Yeah, Daniel prays for the people. But what happens? Later on when Daniel's dead, they go. Or very, very, very age ripe. They come into the land. But here Moses takes on. Jesus Christ as an example as a sign I stood between the Lord and you at that time watch that to show you the word of the Lord John 1 1 says Jesus is the word for ye were afraid by reason of the fire you know why I got saved when that preacher told me about hell I'm gonna burn in hell that's why I got saved not because Jesus Christ was virgin born. Not because I'm going to get a new body in New Jerusalem. Man, was, you're going to burn. The word of God came. Watch that. The word of the Lord, then the fire. That lays out Romans chapter 10 with our mediator, Jesus Christ. Isn't that an interesting way this laid out? For by faith, uh, no, that? faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. And went not up into the mount, saying, I am the Lord thy God, which brought thee out of the land of Egypt. Can't, I can't say that. He's brought me out of the world, but not Egypt, Israel, verse 1. What's that? Egypt is a type of world. Egypt is a type of world, but what we're looking right now is we're looking at the Ten Commandments here, Israel, Egypt. Because there's some of these commandments that are being followed today. Not rightly, but there's a claim. There's only one nation God has taken out of the land of Egypt physically. Spiritually, yeah, that's us. God taking us out of the world. By that meteor, Jesus Christ. From the house of bondage. Exodus. Thou shalt have no, thou shalt have no other gods before me. Number one. 
God first and only God. We fail that one. We don't need to go on to verse 8. We always, when you put gods, it's anything that you put before God, that becomes a God. Small g o d, sometimes small g d o s. When it's not God, big g o d. We do that daily. Number two, thou shalt not make thee any graven image. Have you got that already? Can you get that? The Bible has over and over and over and over about the image, the graven image and falling down. And yet there's a time coming up to the great tribulation period and they're going to make an image and they're going to fall down and worship that image. Or any likeness of anything. <laughs> Look at that. God says anything. Male, female, fish, animals, whatever. That is in heaven above, fowls, birds, stars, moon, angels. Or that is in the earth beneath, mammals, humans. Or that is in the waters beneath the earth, fish. Again, we talked about this the other night. That fish symbol is an icon. It's an image. And God said it's not Christian. It's an abomination. Just like Dagon. What's that? Just like Dagon. Just like Dagon. Thou shalt not bow down thyself unto them. So when Christmas time, when you got the, the presents under the tree, you bow down to water that tree. Jeremiah chapter 10. You bow down to get those presents. Nor serve them. Clean them. Dust them. Give offerings to them. For I, the Lord thy God, am a jealous God. You wouldn't expect God to be jealous, would you? That's not a worldly God. My God says, my God, who I'm saved by the blood of Jesus Christ, my Father said, if you have anybody else but me, I'm jealous. Visit iniquity. Of the fathers upon the children under the third and fourth generation. Why that? The Bible says the father shall not be put to death for the children. Children shall not be put to death for the father. What do you do with this verse? It's a contradiction to throw the Bible in the garden skin. No. I thank God in 1987 that verse stopped for my life. I thank later on my grandpa that verse stopped in his life. I don't think it stopped for my aunt, and she didn't have no children. What this is, is that Catholic church, from child to parent to grandparent to great-grandparent to great-great-grandparent to your ancestries. Years and years and years, there's that dolly. There's that icon. There's that statue. You you want Mary to be happy with you? Son, go out there with, with a brush and, and soap and water and clean that statue. Mary will love you and she'll give you less time and purpose. That's the teaching. Take those beads and I'm not going to go any further. Take those beads, kiss them and, and give them to the honor. You pass that on to your children. But what, let's look at something real quick here also. The iniquity of the fathers upon the children unto the third and fourth. Where's the mother's? But what do you call that man in charge of that church that teaches you to have the idolatry? You call him father, don't you? Yes, they do. Upon every priest is going to be the greatest damnation of the greatest damnation outside of Adolf Hitler in hell for teaching all those people about doing this. And the fathers of the household. Showing mercy unto thousands of them that love me. Oh, wait a minute, I didn't finish. Wait a minute. The fathers upon the third and fourth generation of them, I forgot three words, that hate me. You mark that down, you show your Catholic friends that. God says if you get involved in that idolatry, you get involved in that imagery, you get involved in the aids of worship, God says you hate me. That me is God speaking. When somebody comes up to me because I preach the gospel, oh, that's hey, you preach hey. You got something around your neck that has Jesus nailed to it? You hate God. You go to Mass? You hate God. 
showing mercy unto thousands of them that love me and keep my commandments. What's the commandment so far? God first, only God, and no idolatry as far as verse 10. And if you're not involved in that stuff with verse number 9, you love God if you don't have any idolatry, imagery. If you do, you hate God. So when a Roman Catholic who's involved in that mess comes up and says, oh, I love God, they are now added lying. And that's a false report we're going to see later on. So, first commandment, God first. Second commandment, idolatry. If you get involved with idolatry, you've broken the first two commandments. How's that? You broke through them. If you don't put God first and you worship gods, you broke number one and number two. How's that? Whoa. I keep the commandments. Really? Verse 11. Now this is Jewish. You don't find this in the church age in the, in the epistles written by Paul or Peter or James. As far as the Christian. As far as the church age. Thou shalt not. Oh wait a minute. Verse 11. Gotta come up, hold on. Thou shalt not take the name of the Lord thy God in vain. For the Lord will not hold him guiltless that taketh his name in vain. Now what's that? A lot of people think when you use Jesus Christ's name as a cuss, absolutely correct. What about OMG? Did you see what I did? OMG. Oh, sweet Jesus, sweet Jesus. That's vain. You know what vain is? When you use God's name of no value, you're not doing it for a teaching. You're not doing it for learning. You're not doing it for prayer. You're just using the name. I'll tell you where one way you use God's name in vain, and many people are going to hate me for it. God bless America. That's vain. One nation under God. That's vain. Because this nation does not have God. For the Lord will not hold him guiltless. That takes his name in vain. Well, that's, a, that's a hefty charge. Keep All right, here's the Sabbath that's not in the church age. Keep the Sabbath day to sanctify it, as the Lord thy God has commanded thee. Six days thou shalt labor and do all thy work. But the seventh day is a Sabbath of the Lord thy God. In it thou shalt not do any work, and they do. Thou, nor thy son, thy son's work, nor thy daughter, they work, nor thy manservant, manservant or thy maidservant, they have them work. Nor thine ox, they have them work, or thy ass, nor any of the cattle, nor thy stranger, which is in thy gates. Nehemiah, man, when they start coming to the gates of Jerusalem, man, he's plucking out his hair and he's ready to deck them. He says, you come back here and sell that junk on the Sabbath, man, I'm going to get you. Ezra and Nehemiah, they learn what the sin of the land is of breaking the Sabbath. And thy manservant, thy maidservant may rest. As well as thou. Rest. And they break that. They tried to break it in Ezra and Nehemiah's time. And they got after Jesus for this one. Of all the commandments. You realize all the commandments they actually could get Jesus for was the Sabbath breaking? Couldn't get him for not having God first. Couldn't get him for idolatry. Couldn't get him for not honoring his father and mother. Couldn't get him for killing anybody. Couldn't get him for adultery, stealing, barefoot. You couldn't get him. only way you could get him was for the Sabbath breaking. And yet he fired right back at him. Well, didn't you take your ox out and give him water? Didn't you have your ass go into a pit and you had to lift him out? Don't you have to perform the circumcision? Don't you have to go in there and prepare the bread? Didn't you have to go in there and light the lamp? Didn't you have to go through that lamb in the morning and the lamb at night? So get off my back, guys. And yet their Sabbath to the Lord, they're walking and they're taking uh, grains of wheat and, you know, threshing them with their fingers and eating. Really? Work is, he tells a man with a withered hand, stretch forth thy hand. They got all angry. What, what work did Jesus really do? He just said, he talked. The Sabbath day was a day of temple service, and they were talking. They were allowed to talk, but not Jesus. I know a lot of Christians like that. They do all the talking, but they don't want to hear you talk. And remember that thou was a servant in the land of Egypt. Remember, 
Remember your history. And that the Lord thy God brought thee out through a mighty hand. Remember the book of Exodus. That's what all Exodus was about. By a stretched out arm. Therefore the Lord thy God commanded thee to keep the Sabbath day. This is the first time in Exodus 20 that the nation of Israel ever heard about the, the six days of creation and the seventh day of rest as far as being written. It may have been stories passed on by Adam to his children unto the children of Israel, but now here we are written the first time Moses broke them. And he went back and got more the second time. The originals were broken. Now back to church age. Honor thy father and thy mother as the Lord thy God has commanded thee, that thy days may be prolonged. Ooh. Your life can be shortened if you don't honor your parents. See that? You see that promise? And that it may be go well with thee in the land which the Lord thy God giveth thee. That's Palestine. That's the covenant that God gave to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. If you behave to your parents in the land, you can have life. That's a promise. Now let's go over to Ephesians. Uh, let's find this one. Ephesians chapter... I'm going to see something... Six. Six. Ephesians chapter 6. Good to have a family that knows their Bible. Verse 1. Children, obey your parents. That's honor. Verse 2 will be, In the Lord. Whoa, you don't see that one over here in Deuteronomy. Paul, how dare you add to the word of God? You bad boy, you. For this is right. But my parents don't want me to serve the, guard, serve the Lord, go to church. Children, obey your parents in the Lord, for this is right. Just pray and do what you can. Now watch this. Honor thy father and mother. That's okay. Let's go back over here. Honor thy father and mother. Okay. Which is the first commandment with promise. Oh, wait a minute. Let me go back over here. Honor thy father and mother as the Lord God has commanded thee, that thy days may be prolonged. There's the promise Paul speaks about. The first commandment with promise. We've already gone through four commandments. There's been no promises. Now here comes number five. Honor thy mother and father. You'll get longevity life. That it may be well with thee. Thou mayest live long on the earth. Paul, you don't know the difference between land and earth. What's that contradiction? Deuteronomy is written to Israel. Israel, people taken out of Egypt. Paul is writing to a bunch of Corinthians. I mean, a bunch of Christians in Ephesus. And he's coming down to the, to the commandments of honoring your mother and father. And he says, that's the first commandment of the promise. You can live long on the earth. But back here in, in Deuteronomy 5, it says land. The Jews want the land. That's their promise. That's their heaven. That's what was given to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, that covenant. So you, once you get in that land, Moses speaking to the children of Israel, once you get in that land, you want to live right, you better obey your parents. Paul, talking to Christians, you're, you're living on this earth, you're saved, you want to have a long life as a Christian, you better honor your mother and father. That part has not changed. But what's the difference between Deuteronomy and Paul writing? Deuteronomy is to the Jew in that land promise. We're not promised a particular land. Except for New Jerusalem. And that's not going to be on this earth. It's going to be the new earth. The new heavens. New Jerusalem. So look at Paul. Paul will say, hey, what commandments were to keep? He will tell us. And he never speaks about the Sabbath keeping. Now I'm not one of them people that said, whatever Paul says, you know, that's it. I'm not... But Paul says, honor thy father and mother. 
Verse 16, Honor thy father and thy mother, as the Lord thy God has commanded thee, that thy days may be prolonged. Still hold for the church age, that it may be go well with thee. In the land, not the earth, in the land which the Lord thy God giveth thee. It's not us. Paul says the earth, as we're walking around. Thou shalt not kill. How many people have, have we seen God tell go in their war and fight? And kill those cities, kill the men, kill the women, kill the children, kill the oxen, kill the... So that kill is not wartime. And when we apply that verse that we're not going to fight for the army, we're not going to join no military service, you are misapplying that verse. That is a personal. Now let's look here for a minute. Honor thy father and mother. That's two people, humans. Thou shalt not kill. You're talking about humans. Adultery. You're talking about a husband and wife. Verse 21, number 10. Your neighbor's wife. Commandment 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 is a relationship to people. Commandment 1 and 2 and 3 is your relationship to God. Remember, what is the greatest commandment, Jesus? And I'm not going to quote this correctly, so forgive me. You should love the, your, love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, with all thy mind, and with all thy soul. Commandment 1, 2, and 3. And to love thy neighbor as thyself. Commandment 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. The Ten Commandments focuses on God first, others next, and there's no room for you. So that thou shalt not kill is a personal vendetta against another human being. It is not a declaration of war. My nation has drafted me, I, and what do I do as a Christian? You go fill in that draft and go fight. Go fight in the name of God. Verse 18. Neither shalt thou commit adultery. Alright. Plain and simple. Murder comes before the adultery. Neither shalt thou steal. Sandwich right between kill and steal is that thou shalt not commit adultery. But look at these three crimes. Murder. Adultery. Stealing. You ever steal a paper clip? That's right there with adultery. That's right there with murder. David violated number six and number seven. Neither shalt thou bear false witness against thy neighbor. That's lying to somebody. Thou shalt not commit adultery, but I'm going to lie with my mouth. I'm going to tell false stories. Then you violate number nine. And when you violate number 18, commandment 7, you violated number 8, steal, you stole someone's spouse. Number uh, verse 20, number 9, thou shalt not bear false witness against thy neighbor. That's when you lie to somebody. A liar. Any lie. Any false. Number uh, verse 21, number 10. This is removed. Verse 21 is removed out of the Catholic Ten Commandments. Oh, I think that. Hold on. Let me get this right. I'm too excited. Number 10, verse 21, is broken into two. Watch this. Neither shalt thou desire thy neighbor's wife. That's number nine. Neither shalt thou covet thy neighbor's house, his field, his main servant, number ten. Well, wait a minute. Isn't that eleven? No. They removed number two. Thou shalt not make thee any graven image or any likeness of anything that is in heaven above, or that is in the earth beneath, or that is in the waters beneath the earth. Thou shalt not bow thyself unto them, nor serve them. For I, the Lord thy God, am a jealous God, visiting the iniquity of fathers upon the children of the third and fourth generation of them that hate me, showing mercy unto thousands of them that love me and keep my commandments. That is removed out of the Ten Commandments of the Catholic. I wonder why. Why would they take that out? I wonder. And in order to get 10 back, they take number 10 and they split it into two. Neither shall thou desire thy neighbor's wife. 
Did you see something there? Did you see something interesting there? Let's go back to Exodus 20. And we're going to see that the Bible is its own dictionary. Let's go back to Exodus 20. Twenty verse number seventeen. Well, let's look at verse sixteen and show the context. Thou shalt not bear false witness against thy neighbor. We're in the same context, correct? Thou shalt not covet thy neighbor's house. All right, let's go back to Deuteronomy. Verse number twenty. Neither shall thou desire thy neighbor's wife, neither thou covet thy neighbor's house. Coveting means desire Paul later on which I didn't get I, I wanted to get it I didn't write it down I forgot you do a search and Paul will say that coveting desiring within the same verse will say lust I have not known coveting or I have not known lust except the Bible say coveting coveting is desire and it's lust by Bible definition, and I apologize, I did not get that verse. But with a concordance, you'll find it. If you look up uh, coveting and lust under the Pauline doctrines. I believe it's First Corinthians. But I'm not sure. Neither shall thy desire thy neighbor's wife. One thing according to Exodus, that's coveting. What does covet mean? Desire. So when you watch that television career, oh, I just got to have that. You're coveting. Oh, I just got to have that car. Well, that's my dream car. I just got to have that body. Neither shalt thou covet thy neighbor's house, his field, or his maid servant, or his maid servant, his ox, or his ass. Ox would be tractor. His ass would be a pickup truck. You know, load of bearing. Asses carry things. Oxen plowed. You want to bring the Bible up to date, that'd be your farm. Farming equipment and your pickup trucks. And look what God says. Or anything that hits thy neighbors. Anything. That's a great pool you got over there. I wish I had one. Oh, you just sinned. I keep the Ten Commandments. Oh, that sandwich looks so good. Wish I... These words the Lord spake unto all your assembly. More than three people. In the mount, out of the midst of the fire, of the cloud, and the thick darkness, with great voice. Imagine what that sounded like. And he added no more. Oh, Bible correctors, watch out. And he wrote them in two tablets of stone, and delivered them unto me. <laughs> You're going to break them, Moses. And it came to pass when he heard, when ye heard the voice out of the midst of the darkness, for the mountain did burn with fire. And ye came near unto me, even all the heads of your tribes, your elders, and said, Behold, the Lord our God has showed us his glory and his greatness. And we have heard his voice out of the midst of the fire. We have seen this day that God does talk with man, and he liveth. Samson's parents are going to say, we're going to die because we spoke face to face with God. Now therefore, why should we die? For this great fire will consume us. They think they're going to drop dead right there. That's how afraid they are. For a great fire will consume us. Our God's a consuming fire. If we hear the voice of the Lord our God anymore, then we shall die. You see how mighty that voice of God is? They are petrifying in their underwear. Never mind their boots. When they're looking at that fire in our mountain, and they're saying, we're done. And they have a body who have not been burnt up yet. I wonder if they remember the story of Sodom and Gomorrah. Where a great fire brimstone came down. For who is there of all flesh that has heard the voice of the living God speaking out of the midst of a fire? None. As we have 
and live. Huh? Moses, the burning bush. They're just so petrified. Mo yeah, Moses dead. Go thou near and hear all that the Lord our God shall say, and speak thou unto us all that the Lord our God shall speak unto thee, and we will hear it and do it. They're asking for a mediator. You know, if you just pop into God's throne room, uh, here I am, God, aren't you? You're gone. Only by the blood of Jesus Christ and the words of Jesus, I am the way, the truth, and the life. Oh, see, live, life, living, life, liveth. We don't want to die. No man cometh unto the Father. Look at it here. You ain't going to approach unto the Father. They're afraid. Except by me, the true and one mediator. And the Lord heard the voice of your words. When ye spake unto me, and the Lord said unto me, I have heard the voice of the words of this people, which they have spoken unto thee. They have well said all that they have said. Everything they said in the fear they had, God said, that's pleasing. Oh, that there were such a heart in them. It ain't going to last. And God knows it. That they would fear me. And keep all my commandments always. They don't. That it might be well with them. And with their children forever. And they don't. As a nation they're out of the will of God today. 2018 and February 12th. Go say unto them. Get you unto your tents again. Go back to your tents. They're like, Go home. But as for thee. Moses stand out here by me. And I will speak unto thee all the commandments and the statutes and the judgments which thou shalt teach them. Now Moses is going to be a teacher. He's been a leader. Book of Deuteronomy is going to be his textbook. That they may do them in the land which I give them to possess it. Ye shall observe to do therefore as the Lord your God has commanded you. You shall not turn aside to the right hand or to the left. And that's a great illustration of the book uh, Pilgrim's Progress. About going off that path. You shall walk in all the ways which the Lord your God has commanded you. Which they don't. That ye may live and that it may be well with you. It's not today. Was it when Babylon came in? And was it when Rome was in charge? And that ye may prolong your days. It didn't. In the land which ye shall possess. Now look at that. Max verse 33. Back to verse 16. If you honor God. Or you honor your mother and father. There is life. How do you honor God today? Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. And thou shalt be saved. What's saved? John the Baptist said, The wrath of God which abideth you if you don't have the sons. 